Now we'll move on to treatment. We'll start with the Epley maneuver, which is the gold standard, or the most commonly used repositioning maneuver for posterior canal BPPV. All right, so I'll switch pillows back to the pillow setup that worked well for the Dix Hall Pike test, because the Epley maneuver is going to start in the same position as the Dix Hall Pike test. So we'll start with the pillow lengthwise. Okay, Emily, so you're ready to do the Epley maneuver? Okay. All right, so go ahead and bring your legs up. Okay, so I just want to prepare you for this, that similar to the Dix Hall Pike test, you might feel your symptoms and you might feel some nausea and vomiting. Let me know how you're doing. If you need to get sick, we'll come out of the repositioning maneuver and we'll let you rest. Okay. Okay, all right. And similar to the Dix Hall Pike test, I'd like you to try to keep your eyes open and just let me know how you're feeling. Okay. Okay. And this repositioning maneuver will start in the same position that you did the Dix Hall Pike test. Okay. It will incorporate three additional positions. Okay? okay, and I'll just talk you through those as we go. Okay. I'm gonna be with you the whole time, right by your side, so even if you feel like you're falling off the edge of the table, you're safe. Okay. Okay, all right. So, let's say that Emily had a positive right Dix Hall Pike test. So she had symptoms when her ear was, when her right ear was down, when she was in the right head back, right rotation position. Okay, so we'll start. Okay. Yeah, we'll start in that position. Now, normally I would start on Emily's right side, but again, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'll start on this side. Okay, all right, so good. So her head is turned about 45 degrees to the right. Okay, Emily, and let's go down on a count of three. Ready? One, two, three, down. Good. Good. Excellent. And how are you feeling? I feel good. Okay, good. Yep. And I can see Emily's eyes from this side as well. Good. I'm just going to move my hand here, Emily. Are you okay there? Mm -hmm. Good. And that allowed her head to lower just a little bit. We want to stay in each position at least 30 seconds after vertigo stops. So we want to check if she's feeling any symptoms. If the client reports vertigo, stay with her, reassure her that everything's okay, continue monitoring movements of her eyes. Once the vertigo stops, then maintain that position for 30 more seconds. It's very important to allow the crystals to stop moving before going into the next position. Okay, Emily, and now let's turn your head 45 degrees to the left. Okay, feeling okay there? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now I'll continue to stand by Emily's side with my hand somewhere on her so that she knows that she's safe. Be sure to choose a, a, a spot on your client's body that feels comfortable for them, that feels secure without feeling invasive. I'll continue monitoring eye movements and checking in with her on symptoms. Stay in this position for 30 seconds after vertigo stops, or if there are no symptoms, still wait at least 30 seconds. Okay, you doing okay there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, now we'll move into the next position. Okay, Emily, keeping your head down, I'd like for you to roll onto your left shoulder and keep your head turned to the left. So try, try not to lift your head up but almost roll on the towel, perfect. Yes, good, yep, roll over, keep rolling, keep rolling, until you're looking down at about a 45 degree angle. Come up just a little bit, there you go. Is that okay for your neck? Mm -hmm. Yeah, feels good. Good, okay. The key things with that transition is to keep the head low, keep the movement on top of the towel or pillow, and finish with the head turned 45 degrees toward the ground. Now, if this is uncomfortable on her neck, you can support her head at the forehead or wherever it's comfortable for your client, or they can also bring their own arm up and support their head. Okay, you doing okay mm -hmm. there? Yeah, you wanna bring your hand up? How's that? Good. Does that feel okay? Yeah. All right, good. And in this position, I can still watch 
for eye movements and check for symptoms. Okay, moving into the last position after at least 30 seconds or 30 seconds after vertigo stops. Okay, Emily, now to move into the last position, I want to make sure that you keep your chin down. We're going to sit up. Mm. But before you do that, I want you to keep your chin down. Yep, perfect. Go ahead and bring your legs off the side of the table this way toward me. Yep, there you go. And then use your left elbow, perfect, to prop yourself up and keep your chin down. There you go. Good. Now on the return to sitting, people might feel some symptoms and feel like they're falling. This is a very important time to be right in front of them, have a hand on their shoulder, their back, their, their head or their neck. Make sure they feel safe and secure. You doing okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now in this final position, I suggest resting at least a minute. Even better is two, three, maybe five minutes, depending on how they felt during this whole process. It's very important to let the crystals settle before continuing movement. Now we'll do left epley. So we would, we would do the epley on the left side if the left Dix-Hall-Pike test was positive. Okay, so Emily, we're going to start in the same position as the Dix-Hall-Pike test with okay. your head off, uh, turned to the left 45 degrees. Okay. okay. Perfect. All right. And let me line your pillow up here. I think that looks good. Good. And your head's 45 degrees to the left. Okay. Great. And now go ahead and lie back down. Okay. Good. How are you feeling? Good. All right. Now, typically, this first position brings on the symptoms because this is the exact same position as the Dix Hall Pike test, which, when we just tested it, would have been positive. So I'm watching movement in her eyes, checking with her on symptoms, staying close to her, make sure she feels safe. And we'll wait at least 30 seconds if there are no symptoms. If she feels vertigo, we'll wait for 30 seconds after the vertigo stops. Now, in some cases, the vertigo keeps going on and on and on. Try to wait until at least the severity of the vertigo diminishes. If at some point in time, if at least a minute or two minutes has passed, then go ahead and continue with the Epley maneuver. All right, and now, Emily, keeping your head lowered, turn your head to the right. So keep your head on the pillow, good but turn so your head is 45 degrees to the right. Great, are you doing okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's all right on your neck? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Also, I want to note, many resources say that this, that the Epley maneuver needs to be done quickly. In my experience, the speed of movement is not nearly as important as maintaining the proper head position during the transitions. So I prefer to move slowly and specifically and to, to instruct or to coach the client through those proper transitional movements. Now, Emily, we'll move into the next position. Mm -hmm. So keeping your head lowered. Yep, let's roll onto your right shoulder. Keep your chin tucked. Yeah, there you go. Sorry. Yep, yep, and you feel free to adjust the pillow. There you go, yep. Mm -hmm. And now turn so you're looking down into the table. Turn your head, yeah, about 45 degrees. Good. How do you feel there? Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, there. Okay. Now that is often the most difficult transition. Depending on the size of the pillow, the surface you're doing this on, it can be a bit awkward. It is important for the person to feel they have enough support on their head and neck. But you also don't want them lifting their head. So take your time with this movement. Emily did great. She adjusted the pillow herself. If the client needs some help, you can try adjusting the pillow. You can support their head from underneath, or you can cue them to go ahead and put their right hand underneath their head. Okay, you feeling okay there? Okay. okay, and then moving into the last position. So now, Emily, we're going to sit up, but before you do that, make sure to keep your chin tucked down. Don't lift your head up. Perfect, yeah, okay. Now bring your legs off the side of the table here. So your knees are at the edge, good, good, yep. And then go ahead and press down through your elbow and come on up and not 
quite there we go lift up just a little bit okay good yeah. and how do you feel there I feel good okay mm -hmm. good I'll stay by Emily's side with just a, a comforting hand somewhere on her shoulder no I'll stay by Emily's side with a hand on her shoulder just to reassure her that she's safe Okay, now I'll demonstrate how to talk your client through doing the Epley Maneuver on their own. It's so very similar to how I just demonstrated, but this time I'll be completely hands off. And I want to give Emily very specific directions about her head movement. Just a reminder that these repositioning maneuvers similar to the test can induce nausea and vomiting. So be sure to keep a trash can handy and reassure your client that if they need to get sick, that that's just fine, just to let you know, and you can get them into a safe position. Okay, Emily, now I'd like to talk you through doing the Epley Maneuver on your own. Okay. okay, all right. So yeah, let's get your pillow into the middle there. Okay. okay, now go ahead and bring your legs up. Yeah, and feel behind you for the pillow right behind your hips. Good. Okay, so now let's do, we'll do left, left Epley. Okay. Okay, so turn your head, yeah, 45 degrees to the left, and go ahead and lie back. So the, the top of your head should be off the edge of the pillow. Perfect. And if Emily had back pain, I would cue her to keep her knees bent. Okay, then, so Emily, you want to stay in this position at least 30 seconds if you don't have any vertigo. If you do feel spinning, then wait until the spinning stops and then wait an additional 30 seconds. And just counting this for yourself, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, is a great way to work up to that 30 seconds. Okay, and then the next position will be to turn your head to the right. Yeah, there you go. So your head will be 45 degrees to the right. Good, and then same instruction here. Most commonly, people feel symptoms in the first position, which is the same as the Dix Hall Pike test position, and they'll feel uh, and they'll feel symptoms in the third position, the next one. Typically, people don't feel much in the second position. Most of the time, the first position and then the third position, the next one we're moving into, are the most provocative because of the position of the canal as we move through the repositioning maneuver. Okay, so Emily, keeping your head low on the towel, roll over onto your right shoulder and keep rolling your head so you're turning. Yep, so you're looking down into the table about 45 degrees, perfect. Yep, and maintain that little bit of a chin tuck. And at home, if you need to put your right hand underneath your head, that's great. Or if you want to have an additional very small towel or pillow to slide under your forehead, that's great. You doing okay? Mm -hmm. Your neck feeling okay? Okay, great. Again, after 30 seconds, then keeping your chin tucked, bring your legs off the side and go ahead and sit up. Okay, good. And rest. Another point I want to make about positioning is that you want to be sure that the person is just far enough away from the edge so that when they make that last roll, they're close enough to the edge to bring their legs off without being so close they roll off the side. A good indication of a proper position is to have them start with sitting on the side here. That way when they bring their legs up onto the table, they're going to be in about the right position. Sometimes people start this with the legs up on the table, and that's fine, but it doesn't give you as good of an idea about how far from the edge of the table the person needs to be in order to finish in this safe position from the third to the fourth position. Again, try this out with a few people and get a feel for where the person needs to be in order to line up through each of the positions. The Epley Maneuver for Posterior Canal BPBV is effective in about 80 to 90% of cases within one to three sessions. So it is a highly successful tool when combined with the Dix Hall Pike Test to be sure that the proper canal is being treated. Another position you might try for your own body movement 
during the Epley maneuver is to stand behind the patient. I wouldn't do this the very first time because it might feel uh, a bit uncomfortable for them. They don't quite know where you are. But once you've done this a time or two with your client, this can be much easier on your body, especially if the person needs extended amounts of time in the head down position. Okay, Emily, we're gonna do the Epley maneuver again. This time I'm going to stand behind you. So you'll feel my hands supporting you from the back. Okay, all right, so let's start with the uh, head 45 degrees to the left. So we'll be doing a left Epley maneuver. Okay, and now on the count of three, I'll have you lie back. Ready? One, two, three, down. Now I can hold her head as she comes down, and then I can just take a seat here. In this position, I'm able to see her eyes very well. You doing okay? Mm-hmm. All right. Can check on her symptoms. Also, if she's uncomfortable, this is a really nice way to cradle her head, to give her support so that she knows she's safe and I'm right here. All right, and then the second position, go ahead and turn your head to the right, 45 degrees. Again, I can guide her head through that transition. All right, Emily, let's move into the next position Keeping your head down, roll onto your right shoulder. Perfect. Good, I'll support your head here. Good, and now turn your head so you're looking down into the table at an angle. Good, is that okay on your neck? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And from this position, I can still see her eyes. I can watch for nystagmus as well as monitor her symptoms. Before she sits up, I'll stand and move alongside of her so that I'm in a position to help steady her when she sits up. Okay, Emily, I'm going to stand up next to you before you sit up, okay? okay. So just hang tight there. Okay, Emily, and now it's time to sit up. Bring your knees over the side, good. Keep your chin tucked and come on up. And now I'm ready to support her by holding her shoulders here in case she feels like she's falling forward or backward or side to side. I'm able to keep her steady. And we would finish with at least a one minute rest in this position. If you liked this video and you want to see more, make sure to subscribe below and don't forget to hit the notification button.